I'm Arthur. And I'm Candice. And we're your hosts for What's New with Microsoft 365. And today we're gonna talk about what's new in January. So this month we're focusing on new tools for first line workers and managers, new experiences across office apps, and more. Let's get started. If you haven't already heard, the new Microsoft Edge is finally here. Yay! Let's check in with Vivian, who will share more about the news. I'm here with Eric, and he's a PMM that worked very closely on the rollout of the new Edge browser that's now available. Eric, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Vivian. I know there's a ton going on with the new Edge, and it's no secret that this is built on open source software and Chromium, but what can you tell us about the new major features available? We have a lot of great new features for the new Microsoft Edge. We're really optimizing for performance, a lot of security by Microsoft, simple management tools, but then also new productivity tools for the web. So some of those, particularly for end users and organizations, are things like the enterprise new tab page. So on your new tab page, you can actually fully customize it, um, and you can connect it to your Office 365 account. When you do that, you then get to see shared files, you get to see pin sites, frequent sites within your organization, and really it's kind of this portal for productivity for you when you're at work. One of the other things that we have going in the new Microsoft Edge is Microsoft Search and Bing. So this is a way for you to actually search your internet just using the Bing search engine. So you can go ahead and type in the Bing search bar or on the Enterprise New Tab page, and you can get access to your internet's files, sites, people, even floor plans at your organization. So it's a really contained experience that's right there alongside the web results. I love the idea of the internet just being simply built into your browser. That's super convenient. It's really great. We like to refer to it as kind of being able to search the internet right alongside the internet. That's just perfect. as easy. So we got the new enterprise tab page. We have Microsoft Search and Bing. But what about privacy? What can you share about new privacy enhancements in the browser? So privacy was something that we really thought about when developing the new Microsoft Edge. And so we have something called tracking prevention, which is a brand new feature for the browser. Uh, you can access this by clicking the little lock icon up in the address bar, and then you can manage it from there in three different ways. Uh, there's a strict setting, there is a balance setting, and then there's also the basic setting. And balance and tracking default in general is on by default. So this really prevents you from uh, having trackers from sites that you maybe haven't visited from following you around as you surf the web. And additionally, IT admins can even set that through group policy so that they know while their information workers are browsing, they are staying protected. That's really great that the new browser really offers that degree of control just because IT admins are really gonna be the ones that know what's best for the organization. Exactly. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the new Edge? One of our big new features for the commercial audience is something called Internet Explorer mode. So something we heard repeatedly from customers is that they would have their end users actually using two different browsers to do different things. Mm -hmm. So whether you're accessing kind of modern day websites, you use one browser, and then if you wanted to go to a legacy site or app from within your organization, you had to use something else. So what we did is we actually created this IE mode within the new Microsoft Edge so that our end users would have access to both these legacy sites and apps and modern websites right within the same window. They don't have to leave. That's great. It sounds like a really thoughtful way to kind of help ease people in the transition between the two. It's been really great so far. We've had a lot of great traction. And then finally, if an IT admin is ready to deploy the new browser, what do they need to do next? So IT admins can download offline installers today from a commercial website. So that's gonna be microsoft.com slash edge slash business. And they can also download policy files as well. Once they download, they can set up a pilot within their organization so they can test it and configure it to their own environment and then eventually deploy more broadly at scale. Thanks so much, Eric, for joining us on the show today and congrats to you and your team on this huge achievement. Thank you so much. Go ahead and download. Thanks for the insights, Vivian. So Eric also called out another new Edge feature, multiple profiles, which lets you toggle between your work and personal profiles to help keep your browsing separate which is actually very helpful. Yeah, it is very helpful, especially when you're sharing a computer with somebody. Yes. Keeping your profile, personal profile, and your work profile separate. That's yeah. That's pretty cool. And also in the interview, we talked about the new Bing Search experience, but the new and improved Microsoft Search will give you contextually relevant results no matter where you are, whether you're in Edge, Word, or even SharePoint. Just click the search box and instantly see answers and info from apps and people that are relevant to you. Oh, I kind of like that. <laughs> it knows me now. <laughs> so we're going to shift over to data residency in Switzerland. It's a new year, and that means a new data center region across the globe. 
Office 365 customers in Switzerland can now have their data stored in an in-country data center. This provides our Swiss customers with trusted cloud services that help them meet local compliance and policy requirements. It'll also help organizations with data residency requirements meet their obligations. So let's move on to Microsoft Online Services terms. Earlier this month, we published our updated Microsoft Online Services terms, which outline more privacy transparency for our commercial cloud customers. These changes provide more transparency on data processing in the cloud and increases Microsoft's data protection responsibility. So as of today, the updated terms are now available to all of our global commercial customers. And now it's time to talk about the end of an era, as in the end of support for Windows 7. Oh, Windows 7. Can you believe Windows 7 came out 10 years ago? I can't, no. Uh, what were you doing? So 10 years ago, I worked as a customer support for a computer company, oh. and I would help people um, pull apart their hard drives and put new ones over the phone. It was kind of challenging, actually. Okay, I was doing something way less cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my senior year musical oh, wow. at school. <laughs> so I have nothing cool to say about that. <laughs> what, what musical did you do? Um, we were working on Grease. Ooh, Grease. Yeah. yeah, we also did High School Musical, the musical. <laughs> <laughs> so that dates me. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's move on to what we're doing to help customers with this transition. So we're going to throw it on over to Vivian to give us some more details. I'm here with James, and he's a senior PMM who works on Windows and Office deployment. And we're going to talk about end of support for Windows 7 today which is the end of an era as we know it. So what does end of support mean for our customers? So end of support for Windows 7 means that if you have any technical issues with Windows 7, you'll no longer receive any support on those. Uh, additionally, Microsoft won't be releasing any software updates or any security updates or fixes for Windows 7. What is Microsoft doing to help customers make the transition to Windows 10? So your win while your Windows 7 device will still work, it is at a greater risk of malware and viruses. So what we recommend in order to stay safe and secure is to move to Windows 10. And if you're a customer with over 150 licenses, you can use the fast track benefit, which will enable you to get a Microsoft representative that will help you, you know, unblock any of the issues that you have to move towards Windows 10. Additionally, we also have a desktop App Assure program, and that program helps customers with any application compatibility concerns. So any app compat issues with Windows 10, with Office 365 Pro Plus, or Microsoft Edge, we can help unblock those for in-house applications. Those are some really great resources to help people get started. And for our customers who are not quite ready to make that jump, what options are available to them? So for customers that really want to move forward but haven't quite made it there because they might be on their journey, um, we offer two things. So firstly, we have the Windows 7 extended security updates. So we will provide critical and important security fixes for Windows 7 uh, as defined by our Microsoft Security Response Center. And for those customers that can take advantage of virtualization, we have our Windows Virtual Desktop, which is Windows 7 running on Azure. And that's really helpful for customers that potentially have uh, you know, legacy hardware and they can take advantage of virtualization. That will enable them to get those extended security updates as well. That's great that we have all bases covered in this transition period. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, the only thing I would say is that Office 2010 is going out of support on the 13th of October 2020. So if you haven't started thinking about moving away from it, now is the time. It's good to always be looking ahead. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Vivian. And that's a great reminder about Office 2010 reaching end of support in October. This is something we'll cover more in detail later this year. So let's move on to preview news next. For customers who work in retail and use Teams, there's a new push to talk experience that lets you deliver clear, secure voice exchanges over the cloud. It basically turns the smartphone or tablet that you use on the job into a legit walkie talkie. Mm. There are some mobile devices that integrate with this feature directly. And if you have it, you can use your phone just like a walkie talkie. Walkie Talkie will be available in private preview in Teams in the first half of this year. 
I'm kind of excited to try that out. <laughs> <laughs> so we've already covered the new and improved search experience, but we're also adding new features specifically for enterprises. With Microsoft Graph Connectors, your organization can index third-party data to appear in your Microsoft search results. These connectors expand the type of content sources that search your Microsoft 365 apps and the broader Microsoft ecosystem. We're also announcing capabilities to set up custom verticals, add your own refiners, and use adaptive cards to create your own visualization in Office.com and SharePoint. And finally, we've enabled developers to use the SharePoint framework to customize the appearance and develop applications on top of Microsoft Search. Also new for first-line workers and teams, one-time SMS codes that lets your team sign into all of their Microsoft 365 and custom apps in one go. And to complement that, a shared device sign-out lets your team sign out of all of their apps on shared devices with one click. This helps keep your customer data protected while making that sign-out experience a snap. These features will roll out to customers later this year. So one of the biggest challenges with providing digital tools to first-line workers is managing their identities and apps. The new delegated user management feature in Teams lets first-line managers approve password resets and allows employees to use their cell phones for SMS sign-in through a single customizable portal. And now that Azure AD's user provisioning integrates with SAP success factors, it's now easier to onboard and manage identities at scale across any application. Finally, off-shift access controls lets IT admins limit employee access to the Teams app on their personal devices outside of working hours. So these updates will roll out in the next couple of months. Ever wish you can read captions during a live presentation? That's exactly what PowerPoint for the Web wants to deliver. With live presentations, this new inclusive experience lets audience members turn on live captioning in 60 languages, navigate between slides to catch details, or send reactions to the presenter all in real time. Live presentations will be coming soon to PowerPoint for the Web next month. And that's the end of our show. It's already over for the month of January. Yeah, I was having so much fun. <laughs> I am too, and I always love going back to my coworkers and giving them the intel on everything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, please be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. We love reading your comments. Yeah, and ring the bell for notifications. Yes. And I guess we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. So now that you've watched this video, don't forget to check out the Microsoft 365 blog that has a little more detail about what we went over today.